All right, here's another proof using our first three rules. Arrow out, ampersand out, and ampersand in. Here's our argument. It has three premises, one, two, three, and then turnstile, the conclusion. We have set it up in the standard way. Premises at the top, conclusion at the bottom, and we have a justification column designating all the premises as assumptions. We're assuming these are true, and we're going to show you that if the premises were true, then the conclusion would have to be true. Thus, we are going to prove that it's valid. Okay, we know we always just start at the top, and the first question is always, what's the main connective? And on this first line, it's obviously an arrow. Since it's an arrow, we know we want to do arrow out. We read the script. If I can find I and R on another line by itself, then I can write N. I take a quick look. I do not have I and R on another line by itself. Now it is an ampersand, so if I had an I by itself and an R by itself, I could build this using ampersand N. But I do not have an I and an R by themselves, so I cannot work on line 1. Time to go to 2. Main connective on line 2. What is it? Well, it's obviously the ampersand. Ah, great news. Ampersand out. You are easy. That's what we should do. So, every time I have an ampersand, it breaks up into two lines. What's going to be on 4? Everything in front of the ampersand. A. What's after it? Everything after the ampersand is on line 5. A, arrow, R, arrow, E. And of course the justification for both of these will be line 2 ampersand out. Using the ditto marks to show that I did it twice. Okay, I can check off line 2 because I worked on its main connective. Doesn't mean it's exhausted. Could possibly use it again. Pretty unlikely in this case. Alright, working my way down. I look at line 3. Arrow's the main connective. Tells me to do arrow out. If I can find R arrow E ampersand A on another line by itself, then I can write R and I. And I take a quick look. Do I have R arrow E ampersand A on another line? And the answer is no, I do not. Well, it has an ampersand as its connective. Could I build it? I would need to have R arrow E on one line, A on another. There's an A. Here's an R arrow E, but it is not by itself. So looking at it right now is, is really thinking too hard. We can't work on 3. All right, so we go to 4. Notice how mechanical this is. I mean, I, I really I don't want you to overthink things. Look to see if you've got what, what you need, and if you don't, go to the next thing. Now, you don't have to do this fast. Thinking slowly is very, very appropriately. Uh, very appropriate. Line 4. Too short to be interesting. Line 5. Arrow's the main connective. If I can find A on another line by itself, then I can write R arrow E. Well, obviously there's an A right above it, and so on line 6, I get to write R arrow E. Fantastic. Justification? It's 4 and 5 arrow out. And I get to check off 5 because I worked on its connective. Now, probably you are saying to yourself, ah, yes, the two parts that we needed to work on line 3 have now shown up. There's an R arrow E on 6, there's an A on 4. And if you're noticing that, well then by all means go straight to working on line 3. If you're not noticing it, then it would be appropriate to go up to line 1 and think about it. You know, but since I've just called attention to it, let's just go ahead and do it. Um, line 7. What we're going to do on 7 is take R arrow E and put it together with A. When I do that, where should I introduce parentheses? They should be around R arrow E because this ampersand that I just introduced, we want to show that it's the main connective for the line. And what's the justification going to be? Now, be careful here. Did line 7 come out of line 3? No, it did not. Line 7 came from 4 and 6, and it was built by ampersand in. What role did line 3 play in the construction of 7? Well, it didn't play any direct role, but I like to call it the inspiration. Line 3 inspired us 
to put together 4 and 6 in this way. Because remember, you shouldn't do ampersand in. You shouldn't do any creative rules unless you know exactly why you're doing it. But we know why we did this. Because we wanted to be able to do arrow out on 3, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. And of course, if we have all this stuff, then we get to write R and I. Yeah, there's that stuff. I built it. So now I get to write R ampersand I. And the justification for that would be 3 and 7. 3, 7, arrow out. What line do I get to check off as a result of all this? Line 3, because I worked on its arrow. OK. At this point, it's appropriate to go back to up to line 1 and think about it again. It says if I have I and R, then I get to write N. Ah, notice I have R and I. Is R and I and I and R the same thing? Well, yes, they are logically equivalent to each other, but we know that we're going to be very rigid about things, and so we just we can't take it for granted that they're the same. We have to show it. And in order to show it, what we have to do is break R and I up. Just like that. And that, of course, would be 8 ampersand out done twice. But now that they're on separate lines, we can go ahead and think of 10 as the P part, and we can think of Q or R, rather, as the Q part. And so now we can just put them together in the correct order. And that's I and R. And by correct order, I mean the order that matches what we're trying to do. So the justification for this, it's going to be 9 and 10 ampersand in. And notice, line 1 is again the inspiration for the work that we're doing. Because now that we have I and R, we can say to ourselves, well, if I could find I and R on a line by itself, then I could write N. Found it. Writing N. Justification? 1 and 11. Arrow out. Having done that, I can check off 1. Now, I can take a look through this, but the truth is, it's now time to be thinking about building our conclusion. We always have one eye on the conclusion. Notice the ampersand is the main connective down there. So to build this, we would need to have n on one line, a and r on another. And I take a look above. Yeah, there's the n right there, a and r. Well, I don't have them together, but I do have them in separate lines. Right there is an a, and right there is an r. You cannot put all three of them together at one time. Our rule only allows you to combine two things in one step. So this is going to take us two steps to build this. Which two have to go together first? Because of the way the parentheses are set up, A and R have to go together first. So on 13, we're going to take 4 and 9 and put them together. A ampersand R, 4, 9 ampersand in. Having done that on 14, now we can take these two lines, 12 and 13 here, and we can combine those, 12, 13 ampersand in. All right, we have finished the proof. We have shown that if these three premises were true, then this conclusion would also be true. Thus, the argument has to be valid. And the reason that it counts as a proof of validity is because we've shown that from here we can get to here and every step of the process is justified by a rule that we have previously agreed is a valid pattern. I hope you're doing well with the proofs. I hope it's seeming easy at this point.